I was prescribing medications to patients that I would have never taken myself. When you made that decision to leave the conventional system, did you have any colleagues or any arrows on your back for making that decision? The only person who was supportive of me doing it was my husband. All of my mentors were like, don't you want to be a doctor? Part of the problem with keto, and don't get me wrong, but um, it's often sold as like the magic bullet to health. And I think it's way more complex than that. I always emphasize the clients when they come in and they're frustrated with conventional medicine. I'm like, look, no doctor wants to hurt you. They're just working inside their toolbox and they're burned out. That system is so broken, they get five minutes to spend with a patient. You're living in a home that has mold in the walls. And even if you're a clean person, you may not see or smell or sense the mold, but it can be in the walls. And what happens is you breathe in the spores. It's very hard to help somebody if they're still in there. I would recommend if you test your home for mold and there's mold, just sell your house and move. The hidden infections, what are the top ones that you're seeing? I see a ton of Lyme that doesn't get diagnosed properly. The other thing that I see is if somebody was born with the infection and they acquired it in utero, or I suspect that often it's just a clinical suspicion, they never amount the antibody response because the infection happened before they developed an immune system. Interesting. Dr. Emily Rowe, thank you so much for coming over and uh, joining me on the Keto Camp podcast here in Miami. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. And you're not too far away. You're also, I just found out, born and raised in South Florida, which is pretty rare. Or... That's, ex that's true. I'm, I'm a native Floridian. Yeah, me too. And it's very rare. It's a very transient city. Uh, when your uh, team reached out to me, I have to admit, I, had, I hadn't heard of you before. And then I started studying you and I was just blown away by the amazing work that you're doing. And your clinic here in Miami Beach is not too far away. But your backstory is what really um, is, I, ad, uh, I, I, I was uh, astonished by your backstory, but I admired it because you went down the conventional allopathic route. And then you, you were one of those students like asking questions, why are they having these symptoms? What's the root cause? Kind of annoying to your colleagues when they were just follow the standard of care. So go back to that story and share some of the things that transpired and what you did to break out of that sick care system. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> I went to the University of Miami Medical School and graduated in 2004. And uh, from the first year, I was a bit of a troublemaker because uh, I would always ask about um, like etiology, like uh, really I wanted to dive into like why mechanisms of disease were happening. And a lot of times they were like, well, you need to just like, here, here's the diagnosis, here's how you treat. And I was like, well, like, you know, Let's do a risk-benefit analysis. Let's see uh, what other options are. And uh, before I went to medical school, I actually considered going to acupuncture school because I had used a lot of alternative medicine for my own healing. But I, uh, I chose conventional medicine instead. And, and I don't regret my choices because it's been a, a great background to have, and I use that knowledge base every day. Um, but, uh, but yeah... Um, I got, uh, I, I was a troublemaker as a student, <laughs> let's just say that. And then uh, I started in, um, in, uh, in internal medicine. I started a residency in New York City, and uh, I was prescribing medications to patients that I would have never taken myself. Mm. And um, I uh, was just really um, burnt out by the system, and I was only a few months in. And at the same time, I started really struggling with my own health. I, I had had health problems for years since I was a small child, but it got significantly worse in medical school. And then with the stress load of residency, it skyrocketed through the through um, because we were working like 100 hours a week. This was before they had uh, laws about how many hours wow. residents could work. And so you'd be overnight in the hospital taking care of patients in the ICU in the ICU wow. and not in the hospital and and one night in the ho in the ICU actually um I had seven patients died and that morning when I finished uh the um death certificates yeah that yeah at, when I finished that that day I had to go downstairs to like the hospital administration area and sign seven death certificates <sighs> and I was like this is not what I went to medical school to do and the ICU is intense. There's a lot of like um, energetics that gets left over from people dying in pain that never gets like energetically cleared. And there's a lot of intense family dynamics. Uh, people will get mad and argue about what to do and whether to resuscitate, you know, Uncle Joe. And yeah. if there's unresolved emotions, it, um, it'll affect like 
care and humane care of the patient. And it was just really uh, disheartening. And so, so I was like, I, I can't live with myself and, and be a part of this system. So I quit. And at the same time, I was struggling with autoimmune disease. I had Crohn's and they wanted to give me a colostomy bag. I was like 29 right. years old. And acupuncture was helping me more than anything I learned mm. in medical school. So, so I, um, I took a semester to really just hit the reset button. And uh, I was living in New York City. My husband at the time was, a, he was doing a fellowship in, at Columbia University in family planning. He's an OBGYN. And uh, I was uh, a little lost. I couldn't even get a job at a coffee shop <laughs> <laughs> in New York City. But I ended up going back to school for acupuncture and I never looked back. Um, and what's interesting is um, I later got trained in functional medicine. And when they created functional medicine, they used Chinese medicine as a basis to like uh, look at like different patterns of disharmony and stuff like that. So when I went back to school for functional medicine, it just um, made sense. And all of a sudden I wanted to be a doctor again. Like for years, I wanted nothing to do with medicine at all. I just did acupuncture out of my house, mostly treating, you know, chronic pain. Uh, but it was limited what I could do with functional medicine. And a lot of my patients never got better. And it turns out, you know, if you have digestive disorders and you keep eating gluten, you can do acupuncture every week, but you're still going to be yeah. bloated and in pain. And, you know, until uh, you really address uh, going back to those underlying root causes. Um, and this is where you start peeling the onion and getting to all these levels. So, so I went back to school for functional medicine in uh, 2017. I trained with chronic Lyme with Dr. Horowitz in 2018. And then starting in uh, 2017, I started working with Dr. Neil Nathan. And he uh, specializes in people who are exquisitely sensitive and mold toxicity. So I've been in his mentorship program since 2017 for mold toxicity. And I mix a combination of... Uh, allopathic labs, uh, acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine, Western medicine. Um, I'm trained by Kurt Schnaubut in um, essential oils. He's, a, he's got a PhD from Germany in um, biochemistry, and he does medical grade uh, aromatherapy work. And so I, I combine all these modalities, um, sound healing uh, and whatnot, um, to just try to help complex chronic medical cases. It's a, it's a really cool story. I admire it because you saw the writing on the wall with the, the sick care being more reactive versus proactive. And I'm sure a lot of doctors, oh, I don't know, but I'm sure some doctors see that as well, but they don't make that decision to say, this is not for me. I'm just tired of looking at the effects of what's actually ha happening before. I want to get to the cause, right? You wanted to get to the cause. So you made the decision I'm curious, and I admire doctors who do this, but I'm curious that when you made that decision to, to leave the conventional system, did you have any colleagues or any arrows on your back for making that decision, anybody that was angry about it? The only person who was supportive of me doing it was my husband. Wow. All of my mentors were like, don't you want to be a doctor? Yeah. And even like my, my father is a general and vascular surgeon and my stepmother is a wow. plastic surgeon and oh, there's wow. a bunch of nurses and physical therapists in my family. And they're like, you're crazy. Why would, why would you do all that school and quit? But, um, but it's, it's funny. Um, it was a difficult decision, and it was um, very heavy at the time. Um, you know, in, in astrology, when you're uh, 29 and a half years old, it's called a Saturn return, because Saturn takes 29 and a half years to do a loop around the sun. And often when people are at that age of 29 and a half, there's like a big uh, shift in reality, and they call Saturn the lord of karma. And I think uh, there's a, a big... Uh, karmic hit that can happen at that time that makes you reevaluate uh, what's going on, where, where do I need to go in my life, how, what do I need to do to fulfill my lessons for this particular incarnation. And uh, I see that a lot with my clients, um, actually. I don't know. But, That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know what you were doing at around 29, 30. Well, when, when I was... Did you have a shift? I did have a shift. That's yeah, why most I, people do. Well, yeah, that's very... Because <laughs> that's when my dad ended up... Um, getting a stroke from his diabetes oh. uh, when I was 29 and uh, he was in the he was in hospice in, in South Beach actually for um, for hospice care and um, he ended up passing away nine months later August of 2014 I was 29 
and he passed and the shift, uh, I turned 30 the month after and the shift was, I was teaching health at the time, but I was kind of just interested in it, kind of like a hobby, but that the shift that occurred was like, oh my gosh, what happened to my dad was preventable. What's happening to so many people with diabetes is reversible, preventable type two diabetes. So the shift was, I took it from a, a hobby or a pain to a purpose and a passion. And that's where it just ignited me to help as many people as possible. So that's very interesting about the Saturn thing. Cause I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah. So the, I, I use medical astrology in, in my work, including like, you know, I also run basic labs. I'm into concrete reality. I love like, you know, running boutique Lyme tests, mold tests, uh, basic blood work. And so I do like, you know, need concrete reality, but I also look at, um, what's going on astrologically when somebody gets sick, because sometimes I think there's karmic aspects that we're meant to experience. And I would never sell somebody on, you know, Oh, you're meant to be sick or, you know, anything mm -hmm. like that. So there's an art in how you discuss it, but I think there's, um, certain gifts that you get from that. Like I'm sure it was terrible having your father die, but it sounds like you had a huge paradigm shift from it. Huge. Yeah, definitely. I, I tell people I was given that mountain so I could show the world the mountain can be moved now. Yeah. And even though the information I know now would have prevented what happened to him or saved them, I, I also believe it was uh, it happened for a reason for me, not to me. So absolutely a big paradigm shift. Start to really dig into what's happening with conventional sick care system and the other side that, that you're in. Um, a lot of people who probably are watching or listening or maybe doing keto, because I, I teach going in and out of ketosis, not forever keto, but what I call keto flexing. So they might be eating clean. They might be sticking to non-GMO foods as much as possible, organic, grass-fed, grass-finished meat. Heck, they might be taking supplements, right? Are you listening or watching? You might be taking a whole bunch of supplements, yet they don't feel optimal. They don't feel well. Um, and I wanted to hear your thoughts. In this day and age, would the perfect diet and intermittent fasting schedule alone get us well? And if not, what is it? What else is there out there that we're missing? So I was struggling with my own health for years and I was like, what am I doing wrong? And I mean, I was doing yoga and meditation and weightlifting and cardio and eating clean and, you know, low carb and um, nothing was working. But um, I find when people are sick, despite a super healthy lifestyle, um, often there's elevated toxic burden or chronic infection. Mm. Um, and often these elevated toxic burdens wreak havoc on the pathophysiology of the body. So you end up with hormone imbalances, blood sugar regulation. I mean, lead's a, a known cause of gout. Um, I see, I have never seen a case of hypertension that didn't have heavy metal toxicity. Mm. I've never seen a case of atrial fibrillation that didn't have heavy metal toxicity. Yeah. I mean, metals are conductors and when they get deposited in the heart, they're going to screw up our electrical conductivity system. Um, mold I think is one of the biggest issues and, um, I've done a ton of training in chronic stealth infections, uh, things like Lyme, Babesia, Bartonella, um, I consider H. pylori a stealth infection too. And I treat a bunch of parasites. I can't tell you how many people are walking around with amoebas. Um, and, you know, I've ha I had a patient. He was uh, told he had IBS and he's uh, been on a yacht all over the world hmm. for years. He's been told for 20 years he has IBS and I diagnosed him with an amoeba. And guess what? We treated the amoeba and the IBS went mm. away. Took and, you back. know, he was being really careful with his diet, this and that. Right. So, and I mean, there's a couple other things for sure, I think, that play a part in it as well. Um, unresolved trauma yeah. is is a really heavy one. Um, really heavy. And when, um, you know, I find a lot of times when people really get sick, there's a perfect storm going on. Mm -hmm. So, like... You know, they got divorced or their father died or they were caretaking for like, you know, an autistic child. And then they got exposed to mold or got a, you know, hit on the head, like traumatic brain in, in, injury. And it's just this conglomeration that results in like complex chronic medical illness. And and there's not there's not a, a silver magic bullet. You know, I wish there was. But, um, and I think part of the problem with keto and don't get me wrong, like I'm, I have, when I had stage four cancer, I, I ate keto and I do bounce in and out of keto and I, um, uh, eat a modified paleo personally, but, um, 
it, uh, it's often uh, sold as like the magic bullet to health. And I think there's, it's way more complex than that. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, no offense taken. I agree yeah. with you 100%. Yeah. I want to take a quick break from the video you're watching to share something with you that has made a big difference with my health and the thousands and thousands of students that I teach all across the world. Now, this is a unique device that has been shown to help with skin health, sore muscles, wrinkles, psoriasis, eczema, scoliosis, migraines, sleep issues, arthritis, acne, scar tissue, wound healing, relaxation, and also boost testosterone levels. What am I talking about? What is this miracle drug? Well, it's not a miracle drug. It's red light therapy. As you can see here, this is called photobiomodulation. And I use this red light therapy device every single day. Not only do I use it, my fiance uses it. Our dogs and cats love it. And the device I have here is from Bon Charge. Bon Charge has a different range of big panels, small panels, from affordable to ones that are a little bit more money, depending on how much you want. And I love this product. I feel so good. And it doesn't take a lot of time to get all these benefits. I simply take off my glasses, which is Bon Charge glasses, by the way, turn it on, and I have it running for 20 minutes once a day. And turn it on, and as you can see, I just leave it there on my desk as I work. 10, 20 minutes uh, per day will suffice, and it makes a big difference. You're gonna notice a big improvement with your skin health and all the things we mentioned earlier in just a matter of weeks. So if you wanna get your hands on this Bond Charge red light device or get their big panels, they also have panels that you could take on the go that are more affordable, then head over to bondcharge.com slash keto camp and use the coupon code keto camp to get 15% off your red light device, or as a matter of fact, your entire order, any product, you can get 15% off with that nice coupon code KETOCAMP. So whether it's these Bond Charge blue light blocking glasses, their sauna blanket, or any of their awesome products, use that coupon code KETOCAMP at checkout. We'll drop a link down below. Go check them out. They are awesome. And let's get back to today's video. So let's tackle you know, some of those items right there. Sure. Uh, let's start with the heavy metal component. Um, you mentioned like AFib. Uh, I've seen that too a lot with people who have AFib. I ask them, do you have feelings? And they do or they did. Um, heavy metals is also a big part of my um, getting sick then healing journey. I had eight fillings in my mouth for 20 plus years uh -huh. like so many of us sure. do. Yeah. Uh, that's the way they did it. And unfortunately, some dentists still do it. So I had the mercury vaporizing into my brain for 20 plus years. Combine that to your point with the perfect storm. 2018, mold in the house I was living in. Combine that with owning a CrossFit gym here in Miami and overtraining. <laughs> uh, so the, the physical stress, the chemical stress, and of course, there's always, always mental stress going on. And then boom, brain fog, digestive issues, uh, having to take naps in between sessions and clients. I was doing personal training at that time. So the heavy metal thing is near and dear to my heart because of what it did to me and what I see it do to so many people out there. So let's address that. Uh, we could start with the fillings component and what to do if we have fillings, uh, how to sure. seek a dentist out, and then we'll go to other metals. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I have patients who come in and, you know, they have a mouthful of metal and if they refuse to do anything, it's like limited how much I can help you. Yeah. You know? And I, especially um, older generation, they uh, are not as likely to... Uh, Make you those know, changes. Yeah, make those yeah, changes. Yeah, go to a dentist and, and just, get them removed. Yeah. Oh gosh, I have this one lady, and she's so lovely, and she comes into me for migraines, and she's just got this mouth full of heavy metal, mm. and she'll come in and tear with tears pouring down her face, and she's a very sweet person, and I'm like, you got to get these metals out, and she she doesn't want to do it. Now, some people truly can't afford it because mm -hmm. it is expensive to have it done well. Yeah. Uh, which is awful because I think. Um, you know, poor people really get the brunt of this. They have the worst living conditions, the worst occupational hazards and whatnot. It's true. But for, you know, middle-class people, you can slowly get your metal amalgams removed. Well, one of, the, one of the, yeah. the, the misconceptions, and I'd love for you to address it, is that the older people or somebody who's had the fillings for 30, 40, 50 plus years, they think it's not an, an issue anymore. It's not vaporizing anymore because it's been 30 years since I've had uh -huh. them. I want you to address that. Yeah, I mean, the metal can crack. And you can slowly be leaching it in and uh, chewing on yeah, food, hot beverages. Sure. It does it to the extent of. Uh, yeah, and that was one of my big parts. I'm, a, I'm an avid tea drinker mm. and I would be and tea is slightly acidic. So, mm. you know and what hot. happens with you when you throw metal into an acid? Oh, it's not good. <laughs> yeah. And it's hot. And so you, you're slowly consuming that mercury. I had eight mercury fillings from the 1980s. And then, um, you know, we used to have this test available to us called the Clifford test. 
that actually looks at immune reactivity to metals. And so it's not unusual to have an allergic reaction to metals. And a, a common example is like a lot of women, if they wear nickel earrings, they'll get this rash right mm. here. Or men will wear a nickel belt buckle and they'll get a rash right where the belt, belt buckle That hits. makes sense. Now imagine if you have nickel in your body mm. and you're allergic to it. So you generate this perpetual immune reaction to something that's inside you. And your body tries to help you. It's smarter than any doctor. So you will actually sequester the heavy metals into your bones. Mm. And so I, I see a lot of this, uh, particularly um, for women when they hit menopause, when they start to have bone demineralization, oh, yeah. Yeah. the metals come out and yeah. they have new onset hypertension. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. Um, but like you said, the fatigue... The, the brain fog and um, a lot of pain. Um, the other thing that I uh, have observed clinically, and um, this is this comes from my background in acupuncture. You know, for since two thousand nine, I've done acupuncture on at least you know forty clients a week. Wow! And so you know, when I palpate, I treat a lot of tendonitis. And when somebody comes in and they have tendonitis all over their body. There's a certain feeling they have in the tendons, and, and I just know they need a heavy metal test. Um, and in Chinese medicine, the liver controls the tendons and sinews, and I think part of it is the, the toxic effect on the liver that generates tendonitis. But I think also part of it is uh, like dissolves like, and there's uh, an affinity of metals for tendons. And then, and then you can get into you know the oxalate component, yeah. right? So if people are eating high oxalates, and so um, in case somebody listening doesn't know, oxalates are um, present in plants, and they're uh, tiny little crystal shards that plants make. But um, when you're eating high oxalate foods, they'll actually uh, bind to heavy metals, and they will like bond into your connective tissue. And uh, so if you're eating diets that are like high in beets or spinach, or I, I've seen people like, you know, trying to be super healthy and doing like two cups of spinach in yeah. a smoothie, Kale. which is like, yeah. yeah. Almonds yeah. as well, especially Almonds. in the keto oh, space. Yeah, almond flour sure. cookies, almond flour this, almond yeah. flour bread, high in oxalates. Yeah. And then uh, you get this oxalate heavy metal, literally like a mesh that builds inside the connective tissue. Mm. And... um there's an art to, to slowly removing it because if you remove oxalates quicker than somebody can handle, you can, you know, cause kidney damage. Somebody can end up on dialysis. You can block the lacrimal ducts and they can end up with an infection of the lacrimal so ducts. So here's, I, I actually did it too fast the first time and I ended up getting all these uh, sty sure. from the oxalate yeah, dumping. I've seen that before. Happened like three times. It's to terrible too. Yeah. yeah. It's like the body's way of forcing it out and those yeah. styes are not fun to deal with. Yeah. I had an issue with oxalates because I had been a vegetarian from the time I was 13 until I was 35. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, whenever you're a vegetarian, you're, you're eating grains and beans a and a lot, you know, yeah. right. And it's just through the roof and oxalates. And then I was drinking tea all day long and the fatigue of autoimmune disease, mm. you need the caffeine. That's right. So, um, it was just, uh, the oxalates were through the roof. Uh, the heavy metals part, so some actionable steps. Mm -hmm. A lot of people reach out to me and ask me, how do I test for heavy metals? And I want to hear how, how you test because there's different ways to test. Some are not accurate. Some can be accurate if you challenge them out and you could do maybe like a urine challenge. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you test at your clinic? So usually what we do is we give a pill of DMSA. Yeah, that's what I used then, to. And then ha have the person collect for six hours. Um, you and keep them on DMSA for, for three days to prevent? I find a lot of patients can't handle it. You yeah. think because it's 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 just too much chelation for yeah, them? Yeah, for sure. Mm. And like personally, um, I can't tolerate any chelation. So we do IV chelation in our clinic and, mm -hmm. and most of our clients do well with it. And, you know, we always like calculate the, the GFR and, you know, dose appropriately. So we, we do IV EDTA. And nice. I mean, um, chelation can be magical if somebody has uh, coronary artery plaques. They help to stabilize the plaques and whatnot. So it can help reduce your, your CIC score? Yeah, Interesting. For sure. I for didn't sure. know that. Yeah. Uh, I'll send you information about the TAC trial. That was actually done by Tony Lamas, who's at Mount Sinai. He's a cardiologist, and all he does is chelation. Huh. Um, yeah, I'll send you information. Yeah. So for those who have done a, a, a calcium score, I tell a lot of people to do it, and it's high. You might want to consider yeah. um, IV EDTA. EDTA, yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, 
personally, uh, when I took one pill of DMSA, I developed a severe autoimmune reaction and couldn't walk for three days. Wow. And uh, I've had one other patient. We gave him one pill of DMSA and he vomited for two days straight. Oh my God. Is the sulfur part of it that's... No, what it is, it's if somebody's super high in heavy metals and then has like allergic reactions to mm. heavy metals... And you challenge them out. You get, make them... So that my other client, he was a young man in his 30s who had recurrent gout. And his lead level was through the roof. And get this, he was trying to fix his leaky gut. And he was buying um, turmeric from a, a health food store that had, that had not metals. been tested oh. for heavy metals by an independent third-party lab. And the turmeric will clean the soil. So um, he was like just dosing himself with lead. Yeah. And, and he also had metal amalgams, and he also had been a pescatarian, which anybody who tells me they're a pescatarian, I'm like, oh, no, test yeah. them for metals for yeah. sure. Especially Unfortunately, our, our oceans are very polluted. But, I mean, arsenic in uh, shellfish, too, is, is a huge... And oysters are bottom feeders. I mean, yep. it's really the sad fish, what's tuna. happened to our environment. Yeah, for sure. But even I've seen people that, that just eat the small fish. And, and they still starting. have issues. Yeah. Well, I... I don't know if you think it's necessary to test heavy metals if you do a health history. Like if I know somebody has fillings or have had them before, or maybe their mom had them when they gave birth, I know they have mercury. And I, sometimes it's not even necessary to test unless you want to get, here are the levels, let's go take it to detox and then here are the levels after. But what are your thoughts on doing a health history and maybe bypassing the testing part and then just going right into the detox? So I, I do like... um. My, my initial appointment with somebody is usually 90 minutes. And uh, depending on what they tell me, I usually have clues uh, diagnostically as to what's going on. And I'll start with that. I often start with uh, mold if I suspect that first, mm. because I, f I find that that helps to treat that first. Mm -hmm. And like, and we're going to transition to yeah, mold next, but yeah, let's stay on the then, heavy metals thing. And then for, well, um, just order though, I, I do prioritize treatment. So you prioritize mold, mold first. Yeah. Cause that's the most common. Yeah. That you and see. then the second is stealth infections. Hmm. And I find heavy metals. Yes, it's definitely an issue, but a lot of times it's not the issue. Now, if somebody comes in and you know, they have all the issues we just talked about and I don't suspect any of the other things. We'll just go straight to heavy metals. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's different for each client. And, and I do pick up, like I said, with the palpation, certain things on physical exam where, where I'm sure that heavy metals, and th this is just my skill set with my hands that I've acquired over the years. And part of it is it's, it's a mix of intuition with intellect. It's great. Yeah. I love it. So if you have fillings in your mouth, you don't want to go to a regular dentist, <laughs> first Definitely of all. Definitely not. Find a biological dentist. There's a, a great resource, iaomt.org. Uh, who do you see down here in South Florida? I have Dr. Theodore Herman in South Miami that I sure, see. Do you know sure. Herman? I, I know of him. Sure. Yeah. Um, I use Dr. Hank Barreto. Where is he? He's um, on San Lorenzo. He's right by... Um, he's in uh, Coral Gables, right by Merrick Park. Oh, cool. He's okay. like a like a block away from Merrick Park. Okay. He's absolutely lovely. Um, he took all my medals out and I was very sick at the time and he made sure to do it carefully so I didn't get sick and honestly ran a vitamin IV at the same time and um, oh, that's a good. Su super kind person. Dr. Hank what? Barreto. Barreto. So if you live in Miami, you could check him out. Dr. Hank Barreto. We'll put it in the yeah. notes. Or but Dr. I, I know of Theodore, of Herman, Theodore too. Herman. He's helped a lot of my clients. Yeah, he he's terrific. He's helped me so much. We're working. Well, he removed all my metals back in 2018, but we're working on. I'm expanding. I'm using an expansion uh, device sure, for the palate. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Because um, I have a very narrow. Um, I have a deviated septum and a very narrow mouth. He said one of the highest narrow, uh, the most narrow mouths he's seen. So it's improved so much and I want to like strengthen my teeth, mm -hmm. strengthen, straighten my teeth. So in order to do that, I need to get that palate adjusted. Yeah, my husband has that same issue. It, yeah. It's huge. It is huge, huge because of, you know, when we grew up eating junk food oh, and processed course. junk, of I course. also had braces and they didn't wear my retainer yeah. after. So yeah, yeah no, my it. husband, I think they pulled 11 teeth out of his mouth. Oh, so wow. he's like, because they told him he had a small mouth. Oh my gosh. I know. And it's like, it's barbaric what they used to do. And I don't so think barbaric. anybody meant harm i think they were trying to help but um yeah i know i agree yeah, yeah. Th that's there what they've been no, trained on yeah there yeah. was no malintention and and that's one thing i, I always 
emphasize to clients when they come in and they're frustrated with conventional medicine. I'm like, look, no doctor wants to hurt you. Mm -mm. They're just working inside their toolbox and they're burned out. I mean, that system is so broken. They get five minutes to spend with a patient. Exactly. And they get about what, like 10 hours of training on nutrition in four yeah, years or so. I don't think I had that much. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> Less than 10 hours. So the metal thing, um, we covered that. Anything else you want to talk about the metal thing before we move on to mold? I mean, I think I, I just, um, so I just want to say with the metal, I evaluate the sensitivity of the patient. Some people can do IV chelation. Some people can do oral chelation. Some people have to do supplements and it's got to be slow. Yeah. Like really slow. So that like, cause if, if I get, um, so I've had a history of Gillian barre and if I get, um, metals mobilized quicker than I can handle. I'll have a up. reactivation of, mm. of Guillain Barre and I can't walk. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that nerve inflammation is no joke. That's why it's important to work with somebody like, like Dr. Emily Rowe here who knows what they're doing. Uh, mold. I was telling you my story. My audience, if you've been listening to previous episodes, um, you know my story. I just moved because of mold. And you also have moved twice, I think you said, because of mold. It's so common. You said it's one of the most common things we see maybe just a brief overview of why these biotoxins are so detrimental to our health and some of the things you do to help remove it from the body. Yeah. So the biggest issue I see with mold is, um, going back to chemistry, like dissolves, like, um, mold in general is a fat soluble toxin. So your brain and your nerves are made of fat. So any weird neurological thing, uh, the first thing I think of is mold. Mm -hmm. So I have patients who have already been to a neurologist and I always encourage them to go to get a diagnosis. But they'll come in and they're like, oh, they told me I kind of have Parkinson's, but it's only on the left side of my body. Wow. Or, you know, they'll get some um, BS diagnosis like uh, benign fasciculations, right? Like, like what kind of bullshit is that? <laughs> um, so, and, and um, or they'll have these uh, sharp shooting, like uh, pains, like that, this uh, that sharp nerve pain or is often pathognomonic of mold. It's like um, migratory neuropathy is pathognomonic, I find, with mold. That and mm. Bartonella. I've never seen... Migratory neuropathy is either Bartonella or mold. Like that, there, it's in hands one day, and then it goes away, then it's in your feet, then it goes away, then it's your pinky, then it goes away, then your ear's tingling. Um, and then I see brain fog, digestive yes. disharmony, chronic sinusitis that doesn't clear, and then often you try going to see an ear, nose, and throat, and you take a course of antibiotics and you just make the mold worse. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so it's like this snowball. But uh, often what happens is um, you're living in a home that has mold in the walls. And even if you're a clean person, um, you you may not see or smell uh, or, or sense the mold, but uh, it can be in the walls. And what happens is you breathe in the spores mm -hmm. And so you get colonized in the nasopharynx and GI tract. So when I treat mold, I do um, the following order. I find, first of all, um, I recommend that you get your home tested and you get yeah, you in a mold-free environment. The environment is the number one right, step. Because you it, get it's out of the so hard to treat. I have people who can't you know, financially, but it, it's like you're just spinning in circles. It's, yeah. I don't... And like, maybe I help these people function on a day-to-day -day basis, but I never really solve the problem. They're not going to, yeah, they're not going to You never really it. get better and you're just like That's spinning correct. in circles. You got to get out of the environment right. or fix the environment. Right. And you know, I don't judge. It's not my life. It's your, it's your path and your journey and whatever. But I make my recommendations very, very uh, yeah. clear. You give their, your but, honest but input. Yeah. I, it's very hard to help somebody if they're still in mold. Yeah. Agreed. So first, first you test the home and either remediate, uh, Often, like that's Pandora's box. Yeah, so you could I, stir some I, I up, would, huh? I would recommend if you test your home for mold and there's mold, just sell your house and move. Yeah, or break the lease, <laughs> like I did. <laughs> if you're, the lease. you're renting, if you're renting yeah. easy, yeah. easy. Yeah, um, but th then I, um, I do do urinary mycotoxin testing, and depending on what mycotoxins show up in the binders, I choose uh, uh, show up in the urine. I choose the appropriate binder. Now. Um, Usually what I do is a glutathione provocation. So I'll give a patient glutathione orally daily for a week. And then I have them sweat the night before 
like either expose themselves to a sauna or red light or exercise, or if you want to do a ghetto sauna, you sit in a hot car <laughs> on a su- South Florida summer day. Ghetto sauna. That's ghetto good. sauna. Put That's, the heat on too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. And then um, eat an early dinner and collect the urine first thing in the morning and send it off. Um and so that that's how I do a glutathione provoked test. Now, some people are so sick they can't tolerate glutathione. That's right. not unusual. Um, if that's that's a big red flag that they have an extremely elevated toxic burden. And then some people are so poor at detoxification, you'll do a mold toxin test and mold toxins don't show up, but I know they have mold. Yeah, their, their body's just holding on yeah, to it for right, dear life. Yeah. For, for protection. Yeah. Just like the heavy metals, they Correct. sequester in your bones. Well, this gets sequestered in your brain. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so that's our first step. The second step is uh, binders. And then, you know, some patients have such severe uh, GI tract disharmonies that they don't tolerate binders. Um, so binders can be constipating. The way binders work is um, they uh, bind to toxins in the GI tract, so you shit them out. Yeah. Um, but if you have... Uh, issues with uh chronic constipation or SIBO often you don't tolerate binders and so there's an art to addressing that um we'll use a combination of acupuncture we do a a sound healing treatment with a technique called acutonics which is tuning forks that you apply to um, acupuncture points Hmm. um and it's it's so beautiful and you immediately go into this parasympathetic mode but part of what happens is um you know the way acupuncture works, it's based on fascia. All the acupuncture channels run in fascia, and fascia is composed of collagen, and collagen has what's called a piezoelectric effect, which means that you press on it um, with mechanical force and you release a flow of electrons. Hmm. So if you're using vibration on the fascia, you're shifting the whole like electromagnetic fields of the body. And you know our two biggest electromagnetic fields are the heart and the brain. So, you know, it, it has, has this huge um, limbic system reset when you start working with the tuning forks on the fascia. Would vibration plates help with that as well? I think they can. Uh, personally, I have one because I have osteoporosis. Oh, you do? So, I've been thinking about getting one. Uh, which, yeah. Which is the one you have? And I think my dog farted, so I'm sorry about That's that. That's okay. <laughs> um, I have to look and okay, tell you. Okay, that's fine. But vibration plate you think can yeah. help. For but in sure. general, it's going to help with lymphatic yeah. system fascia. Oh, yeah, yeah, and and bone, and right? Bone. And bones, bone bones regrowth. respond to right. frequency as well. Um, so and, and just balance and whatnot. The re- the reason why I have one is because of the osteoporosis, and then with the Guillain Barre. Oh yeah, and the right. neuropathy in the feet. Uh, the vibration play helps my balance. A, a I have lot. a question on the neuropathy, but sure. I, I don't want to. Uh, oh no, f- I mean we can. <laughs> I'm okay being tangential. Okay, um, so. <laughs> Three weeks ago, I started uh, my mold protocol, and I told you I went too heavy. Uh, I was also doing some heavy metal stuff, and I'm doing carnivore, the stress of the move, and there was a lot of stress. I was really pushing my body. I even saw it with my heart rate variability dropping, resting heart rate increasing. And uh, I've been noticing my, I've, ha- I've had this neuropathy um, for the last three weeks, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out where is it coming from. So right here is kind of numb where I could feel it, but it's, it can't really, it's not that sensitive. I feel it here and a little bit on my left side. Definitely not a diabetic neuropathy because my insulin A1C is all great. Good. Some things to consider because I'm exploring where it's coming from is uh-huh. that I push myself too much with the mold detoxification uh-huh. and that triggered something. The overall stress of what I did triggered it. I have Raynaud's as well as a Raynaud's playing mm-hmm. a factor here. I've had reoccurring disc pain. Uh, so I'm wondering if it's a sciatic issue that's Uh coming back and i play basketball i'm very active so i'm dealing with it right now and i'm not sure what the cause of it is and i wanted to get your input have you ever had any autoimmune processes going on besides i have raynaud's and erythromyalgia okay and with the raynaud's did they do uh, antiphospholipid antibodies no yeah you should get that checked okay um so the reason why i ask is there is a, a test i run that's called the cunningham panel Okay. That looks at immune attack on brain and nerves. And Cunning, Cunningham. Cunningham panel. Yeah, it's through a lab called Moleculera. And uh, they're out of Kansas. And Craig Shimazaki is a PhD who runs the lab. And he's absolutely lovely. So um, 
They have found that both mold and chronic infections like Lyme can trigger uh, like autoimmune attacks on the brain and nerves. Mm. And you'll get this these kind of uh, issues. Um, so this concept originally came out of children. They would get strep throat and kids would get like severe changes in personality, have hallucinations and stuff. And it's called PANDAS, which is a pediatric right. uh, like autoimmune attack on the brain that happens due to an infection. It can also happen um, with Lyme. Uh, and I've seen it happen with viral infections. I've seen it happen a lot with shingles post COVID because the shingles kind of piggybacks off COVID. And I don't see a difference between actual COVID and the vaccine. I see it with both. Um, yep. but, uh, what'll happen and you can get adult, uh, like autoimmune, um, attack on the brain and nerve. Uh, but I see it either with mold or infectious process. I don't suspect infectious process from what you told me. What about mold sciatica? Can do it. Yeah. It can, all these weird neurological things are classic of mold. So I would consider running a Cunningham panel from what you told me. Um, the, the, what about the possibility of the sciatic nerve, though, with the lower back? Could I mean, that, sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it could be musculoskeletal. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm but, just, you know, I just want to. But it, usually, if it's musculoskeletal, it follows like one line, and it's it's both legs. So it's, it's primarily the right, um, mm -hmm. the left one, not so. It's maybe like a little bit, but yeah, yeah. you're right, though. It is both legs. Yeah. In general, but yeah, because yeah, usually, usually, true sciatica is unilateral, and uh, often I find that. <sighs> So there's, there's, in, in regards to sciatica, there's, there's two major things. One is piriformis syndrome. So mm -hmm. the piriformis is a muscle that confronts, connects the front and back of the hip and it's underneath the glute and the, the sciatic nerve runs through the piriformis. And if the piriformis goes into spasm, it'll squeeze the sciatic nerve and you get a fake sciatica. The way to differentiate true sciatica from piriformis syndrome is piriformis syndrome goes to the hamstring and the calf, whereas true sciatica goes all the way down to the foot. Okay. I'm getting so, it all the way down to the so foot. Yeah. So but yours is, sounds like true sciatica, but I see a lot of piriformis syndrome and that's easy to fix with acupuncture. Mm. Um, that happens a lot from people sitting on their wallet, actually. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they're sitting right on, yeah. on the piriformis. I don't do that, but or, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I see it all the time. You know, I've actually never done acupuncture. Oh. I know. A blasphemy, <laughs> right? My fiance goes every week, um, 125th here at uh, San oh, Susi. Um, cause we, we didn't know about you until now, but I I've never done it and I'm open to doing it. Don't get oh, me yeah, wrong. I just have sure. never done it. Yeah. Uh, I, I get good results with acupuncture, um, for neuropathy. Really? Yeah. We also back use pain too. back pain. Oh yeah. Back pain. I get amazing results. And then we also use a technique that's very interesting. Um, we have two other techniques for neuropathy. One is called glucopuncture and it, it was developed in, um, the Netherlands and, uh, you basically inject, uh, acupuncture points with dextrose, 5% dextrose huh. and tiny amounts. And you just go subcutaneous. So you don't even go into the muscle. Um, but there's something about the dextrose that resets the fascia and, and the C, uh, C fibers of the nerves. And then another technique we use is out of Germany, which is, uh, called neurotherapy. And we inject procaine into acupuncture points mm. and that, that we get amazing results. And then we do a combination where we inject peptides into acupuncture points. Personally, when I had horrendous neuropathy and nothing was working, uh, ARA 290 is a peptide that helped me immensely. Now there's issues right now. I'm sure you've heard yeah, peptides. With the peptides yeah. So I don't, I don't know if that's one of the ones that is going away. I think we have access to them until January. Yeah. Uh, but that combined with BPC-157, TB4 frag, and uh, thymus and alpha-1 were game changers in the level of pain I had. Mm. Okay. Like game changers. Well, uh, the, you, you'd still recommend that Cunningham panel, oh, though, yeah, for to sure. see because how the, auto, how, if there's if the a, autoimmune yeah, is attacking if this, me uh, or talk, if attacking this my mold, nerves. Uh, exposure yep. triggered an autoimmune reaction. It's interesting. You know, the Raynaud's... And I have Raynaud's and erythromyalgias, and these uh -huh. are erythromyalgia is really rare. And, yes, it is. And it's rare to have both because they're kind of right. both different, right? Uh, Raynaud's is more you can't tolerate cold. You know, you go uh, white and purple. Mm -hmm. 
And then erythromyalgia is like the opposite. You get hot and inflamed. So how it manifests for me, and, and it's been so much improved with everything that I'm doing. I used to get mm -hmm. flare-ups every day. I don't anymore. But how it manifests for me when I'm fasted, more Raynaud's if I'm in a cold exposure. And that could happen if I you know do something that I touch something too cold mm -hmm. for too long. But after I eat a meal, then the erythromyalgia flares up and then my fingers get hot. But with carnivore, I haven't gotten any erythromyalgia flare-ups. It's only when I eat carbs. So from what you're telling me, like if I want to like kind of step back two steps, mm -hmm. it's an issue with circulation. And for this, I would recommend um, nitric oxide. I take... Do you? Um, yeah, nitric it makes, oxide. makes a, a big difference. Yeah, and it, uh, and it helps. When I have a flare-up, uh -huh. well, I'll take it and yeah. it'll go away. Okay, good. But I also don't want Because it would actually treat both. Yeah, right, exactly. But I don't want to rely on nitric oxide supplementation. It. So I try to do things naturally as sure. well. But I do think circulation is a, a good yeah. thought process there. I mean, to me, the best way to, to trigger nitric oxide is exercise, yeah. which I know you do. Yeah. But like, you know, I, I tell people that. And it's been hard to do with um, oh, the yeah. neuropathy. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Like I, I, I have a sprained ankle that's oh. bruised because I was trying to play basketball with the neur neuropathy and I just, and it feels... feel right. Yeah, yeah, and I ended up spraining it, that's, so... I, I believe me, I get it. Yeah, with, yeah with the, you've had it yeah. bad, yeah. No, and thank God I was trained... Like, so I trained in ballet from the time I was three oh. till I was 20. And thank God I did, because otherwise I don't think I'd be able to have a normal gait. Wow. But so it's a good thing you, you were physically active yeah, with CrossFit correct. and sports and stuff, because yeah. you take somebody who's been a couch potato their whole life and you- They're in bad they, shape. No, oh, like mobility is a huge issue. Yeah. This is how people end up in nursing homes. It's I've terrible. Never, and I never had this issue until three weeks ago, my entire life. It's the mold. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it has to be the mold. I mean, mold. it sounds like it correlates. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what's interesting with, with the, the what you just said, because I was thinking about the environment I was in with the mold, right? Uh -huh. And I've, I do so many things for my health. We do, right? We right. do all these modalities. And Thank if God I, you do, otherwise imagine. Uh, exactly. You have like a if, if, uh, if yeah. I would have been, in, me and my fiance would have been in such bad shape yeah. by the environment. No, we were sure. there for five months and we started noticing it. But imagine if we weren't healthy, yeah. what it would have done no. to us. So that's why I feel for people who are watching and listening who are trying to do everything possible and their environment is making them sick. So we hope that you guys explore that. Um, but yeah, it just made me think about that with what mm -hmm. you said with the valet. Mm -hmm. So probably is molt. <laughs> <laughs> I got to yeah. dial. Now, now some patients, I don't recommend, I don't always recommend the Cunningham panel. It's kind of like, because it doesn't necessarily train, change how I treat people. And it is, it's an expensive test. It's about a thousand dollars. But some people psychologically just knowing what it is, helps them a lot. Mm. I'm that type of person. Like I need to know, otherwise it's going to drive me crazy. So I will find a way to, <laughs> to like spend less. Not, I'm not going to buy that dress in my, that handbag, but I'm going to buy the cunning. Yeah, I'm like you. Uh, but, but, um, some patients who have like severe anxiety disorders, I don't necessarily order the Cunningham because Oh, and okay, they're like, worse. oh, yeah. my! Oh, now I'm being attacked, my brain, and it and it doesn't change the way I treat you. I'm still going to treat the infection now and the mold. That that mindset, like they're not going to get better right. because exactly. This, this so is so I, I you know I gauge the patient and I think what's going to help them best, and this is just you know part of a you know professional calculation. That's the um, best way to do it. That's yeah, what the best coaches sure. do. Well, they, they we're all the unique pe people. Yeah, exactly. But from what you're telling me, I I think it makes sense to run a Cunningham panel. Okay. Yeah. I'm down for that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. I want to feel great. Yeah. And then with the history of the Raynaud's, you should check for um, antiphospholipid antibodies. Mm. Do you do that as well? Yeah. Okay. And that that's a conventional test that can be run by any doctor. Yeah. That's like one, that's a Quest or LabCorp. Okay. So I could probably but, order for myself yeah. too, but at yeah. the, uh, the Cunningham, but I want to do three for sure. For sure. It'd be uh, my honor. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Let's close with the, uh, the infections, the hidden infections. What are the top? the top ones that you're seeing? I see a ton of Lyme that doesn't get diagnosed properly. Um, I think you said 50% of Lyme tests are inaccurate, right? So most people who do a Lyme test do it th through um, like a standard, like Western blot ELISA combo. And that misses 50% of cases. It's crazy. 50%. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, personally I had uh, Borrelia, Babesia, Bartonella. I never remember a tick bite. Now I pulled multiple ticks off my dogs. I did live in um, Pennsylvania uh, for a short period of time in New York, but mostly I was down here. Um, I suspect I had Lyme in utero, 
Um, my mother was from Pittsburgh and she loved going hiking in the mm, woods. And, interesting. And uh, it's a known infection that can spread through the uterus. And I had uh, multiple problems with illness as a kid and early on autoimmune disease. And part of the theory is that when you have a chronic infection, especially something like Bartonella, Bartonella is an obligate intracellular pathogen, which means it has to live inside cells. So if you constantly have a bacteria living inside your cells, your immune system starts attacking its own cells. Yeah. And I went down this kind of uh, new age guilt path for years. I was like, oh, why is my body attacking me? Why do I hate myself? Why am I self-destructive? And honestly, it was the fucking infection. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't you know? the body. It was something but, that came and in. I mean, I did have some emotional stuff and I definitely addressed it. But I really think I see a lot of patients come in and they have this new age guilt, mm -hmm. uh, especially with cancer I patients. I see it too, yeah. And, you know, just let that go. Just focus on concrete it's reality. It's not going to help. Yeah, it doesn't help. Faith and, and fear. Uh, yeah, like you no, choose. and honestly, all of us are being poisoned. And you want, like, it's just, it's a terrible reality. But once you accept that, you just need to focus on doing something about it. Yeah, you're right. And it's not a conspiracy. Go watch. Have you seen the movie uh, Dark Waters before? Yes. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. If you haven't seen it and you're yeah. listening to this, go watch Dark yeah, Waters if sure. you want to see how we're being poisoned by these big companies. Yeah. Or, or the Aaron Brockovich story, right? The Aaron Brockovich yeah. story too. That's yeah. another one. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Those are perfect. Yeah. Those are both true stories. Yeah. So, yeah. Before I went to medical school, um, oh, I didn't tell you this part. Um, I was at Florida State University and I was planning on getting my PhD in microbial bioremediation. And what we would do is we would use up microbes to clean up toxic waste sites. So we would dig in the ground about 500 feet, we'd get soil samples, and then we'd be plating bacteria and looking for things that were already in hmm. the environment reducing heavy metals. And so I worked with uranium daily for several oh years, which is how I got thyroid cancer. Oh and uh, I have gosh. one of the worst heavy metal profiles you've ever seen. It's like off the chart in niobium. I also lived in China, which is a dump ah. in regards to heavy metals. So yep. yeah, some of my clients who have done a lot of international travel to China have huge toxic burdens from the industry over there. Then there's no regulation. So their air quality is much worse than here or Mexico City has terrible air yeah. quality. So I always like take that into consideration. But uh, no, in regards to the stealth infections, um, I think they're huge issues. Um, they follow cyclical patterns. Often Bartonella will be on like 23 to 28 days. So you'll have like uh, a couple good weeks and then you get hit out of nowhere. And what's very interesting is um, they're, I consider them yin pathogens, they're stealth, and they're often on lunar cycles. And you can go on like, you know, um, science direct daily and you can see that the, the bacterial counts in the waters of the oceans are through the roof during the full moon. So if oh. I suspect somebody has a stealth infection that hasn't been properly diagnosed, we'll actually coordinate the blood draw with a lunar cycle. It doesn't have to be exact. It can be within a few days, but it's very interesting to observe these correlations with nature. So I'll have very people come in, you know, with digestive complaints and they're like, oh, it was so good. And then all of a sudden it hit me out of nowhere. And you look and it's like, oh yeah, because it was a full moon mm. and you have an amoeba. Um, so, so pay yeah. attention to when it's a full moon and your <laughs> symptoms. And Seriously, it sounds like such fruit, new age fruit ball stuff, but I do believe that, works. that I mean, there's patterns in nature mm -hmm. and we're, we're part of nature. And even though, you know, we, we tend to feel so isolated from it, um, I agree. you can't help but experience it. I agree. Can you uh, just adjust the mic? So I, it's, I'm sorry. No, yeah. it's fine. I just want to make sure how, it captures your good? audio. Yeah, 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 you're good. good. Okay. Um, so how are we testing? How are you testing for Lyme? So I use uh, two different companies. Uh, I use Igenix but I actually prefer Infecto Labs. And the reason why I prefer Infecto Labs, they do what's called T-cell reactivity testing. So one of the problems with Lyme and why the conventional tests don't work is it's an antibody test. But one thing that Borrelia does is it'll burrow into your lymph node and basically eat out your lymph node. Jeez. So you can't mount a proper antibody response. So th if I suspect somebody has a... Uh, chronic infections, I'll run an IgG subclass panel. And so IgGs are antibodies. So you'll, you can look at IgG subclass one, two, three, and four. And classic of chronic Lyme is an IgG subclass one and three deficiency. Mm. 
And so they don't mount the antibody response to the actual infection inside them. The other thing that I see is if somebody was born with the infection and they acquired it in utero, or I suspect that often it's just a clinical suspicion, they never mount the antibody response because the infection happened before they developed an immune system. Interesting. And so you never see it as foreign. Um, so I look at T-cell reactivity testing. So this was developed in Europe about 10, 15 years ago. And this is Infecto Labs you're this referring to? This is Infecto okay. So yeah, so the, the test... Um, is it a blood test? It's a blood test. And you draw blood and you look for T-cell reactivity to uh, the various infections. And, you know, a full panel is expensive. It's about $2,000. Usually I will order a panel based on what I think is going on in the body. But they have uh, amazing T-cell reactivity testing for uh, aspergillus and candidiasis, oh. which is really helpful for mold toxicity. Um, they have great um, Epstein-Barr and CMV panels, and they have an HHV6 one uh, because I see chronic viral happen a lot with mold. Mm. Um, yeah, like people get exposed to mold and the viruses, which were previously quiescent, have They're a party. Opportunistic. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. The immune because, you know, down. like you have chicken pox when you're a kid. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, 30 years later, you get cancer and you're immune suppressed and you end up with shingles. The uh, Epstein bar is the same way. It's chicken pox, uh, vaccination you mean or, or no, chicken, chicken pox, pox in like, yeah I, okay just yeah. have chicken just pox having as chicken a kid. pox as a kid yeah which isn't unusual for someone my age i had so, i had yeah. chicken pox when i was yeah, a kid for yeah. sure yeah it's not unusual and so um you know the virus stays in your body and it's quiescent and then if you get immune suppressed um that whole perfect storm scenario we're talking mm. about all of a sudden you can get a shingles outbreak and Epstein-Barr is the same way, but you don't get a skin manifestation. So you can get mono when you're 15. You get you go through the whole mono course, whatever. And the, the mono is caused by Epstein-Barr, and the Epstein-Barr never leaves your body. But 30 years later, if you're living in a house with mold, and all of a sudden you the heavy metal toxic burden is elevated, and then you get COVID that Epstein-Barr reactivates because your body just can't keep it quiescent anymore. Makes sense. But with Epstein-Barr, there's no skin manifestation. The mm. main manifestation of Epstein-Barr is fatigue and uh, brain fog. Mm. So there's a whole class of viruses that are called herpes viruses, and it's not necessarily sexually transmitted herpes. So human herpes type 1, of course, is cold sore. Human herpes type 2 is genital herpes. Human herpes type 3 is cytomegalovirus, which is a lung infection. And at, at one point when I was in a moldy environment, I had a chronic CMV in, infection. Wow. Um, and then human herpes type 4 is Epstein-Barr. And then there's HHV6, which is a huge component that we find with dementia. That'll cause, um, you take old people and often their HHV6 titers are off the chart. Uh, but I see it often as a small component of brain fog when people have mold, is these viruses just, have the opportunity to like throw a keg party yeah. in your brain. Yeah. And yeah. all of the all of those viruses that I just listed off can cross the blood brain barrier and cause brain inflammation and contribute to foggy thinking. So um, the other thing that I see a lot is all of these viruses, because they're herpes viruses, get turned on by arginine and turned off by lysine. And lysine is high in dairy products, but a lot of people are like dairy is inflammatory towards a lot of people. I can't eat cow dairy at all. I can do sheep, me but, too. I, but I can't do cow or goat. I saw a study, 75% of adults right. are lactose intolerant right. or have some degree of it. So people cut out dairy and then they start eating the nut butters like crazy and yeah, it's like almond milk latte yeah. and this and that no but the almonds are super high in arginine and arginine and arginine That's turns true. on all of the herpes viruses and then next thing you know you have this these perpetual cold sores they'll come into me when they keep having vaginal outbreaks of uh, herpes and it's miserable That's um, interesting. I oh i see that. it all the time and i'm like quit the nuts so We're arginine, the nuts. yeah. So, <laughs> so arginine, it turns it on. What turns it off? Did you say lysine? Lysine. Okay, got it. So, and arginine's high in all your nuts, and it's also high in bone broth. And I love bone broth, but so, this yeah. is like the balance you need to. And so, personally, I can't, uh, I can't deal with having like the per perpetual CMV. So I just take lysine pills every day. 
There you go. Cheap. Yeah. And five dollars for a bottle. Yeah, I have some in my pantry yeah, here too. Perfect. Yeah. I have L lysine. Perfect. That's fascinating. Yeah. There's there's so many different. I mean, we could talk for hours. No, but this is what this. I'm saying. This yeah. is all multifactorial, peeling yeah. the onion, levels and levels and levels, and it, it never gets boring. That's what I love about yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> it, it's I'm always learning too. Yeah. I've learned so much today. Your your clinic and uh, it's in Miami Beach. For those who are either in Florida or you want to come right. down to beautiful Miami, Florida, uh, it's here. Uh, in uh, Miami Beach, Florida, it's called the Miami Beach Comprehensive Wellness Center, right by the convention center. You said, Miami yeah, we're Beach? we're a block away from the convention center in South Beach, um, right across the street from Macy's. Oh yeah, I know exactly where that yeah, is. Okay, right off it. Lincoln Road. Yeah, and it's it's a small clinic where we're under the radar. I want to be a clinician. I don't want to. I've I've seen a lot of really good practitioners. Uh, get bigger than they can handle so we have a waiting list for new clients because i don't want to do a shitty job yeah and respect. i refuse to practice factory medicine um mm-hmm. there's no shortage of pain in the world um i never feel threatened by another acupuncturist or practitioner because uh like i said we, we need you, them. yeah you need them <laughs> please more for the mission yeah, seriously do you do any online consultations we as well? do okay we do well so we'll put your website well what is your website you could just uh, share it now. it's www.miamibeach wc.com that's cat wellness cat we'll put that down below yeah, in the, in the notes sure. um we'll also put your social media down below i have one final question that i ask all my guests um hey, i want to take a minute to share something with you as we take a break from the video you're watching you know one of the most common things i see to why people don't have enough energy levels they have trouble building lean muscle mass they have brain fog fatigue and they don't feel good is because of a deficiency in a hormone called testosterone. Now, testosterone is a very important hormone to have in a healthy amount for both men and for women. So how do you reclaim your vitality? How do you reclaim this very important fat burning and muscle building hormone? Well, you can do it with a powerful supplement called Upgraded T. It has been my go-to for naturally elevating testosterone levels. Upgraded tea is from Upgraded Formulas, and it contains the highest quality of ingredients that have been proven scientifically to increase testosterone production. Now, as I mentioned, if you're a woman watching this, this is very important for you just as a man watching this right now. Upgraded tea is a natural and safe way to boost testosterone levels. When you boost testosterone levels, it's going to increase your sex drive, vitality. It could help replace fatigue with all-day energy. It'll help you lose that stubborn belly fat. Uh, testosterone is required for fat burning, so it'll help you with the last 5 to 10 pounds that you're looking to lose. It helps you be in a better mood, helps with your memory and focus. So here's the three-step approach. Step one, take two capsules of upgraded tea with water every morning. It does not break your fast. You can have it with food or without food. Step number two, notice your energy levels and dominate your day with more confidence and more vitality. Step number three, Wake up the next day having better sleep and just keep doing what you're doing. As simple as that. So if you want to get your hands on upgraded formulas, upgraded tea, and any of their awesome products like their upgraded magnesium and their hair mineral analysis testing kit, head over to upgradedformulas.com. And if you use the coupon code ketosis at checkout, they're going to give you 15% off your entire order. That is upgradedformulas.com. Ketosis at checkout. We're going to drop that link down below. And let's get back to today's video. I talk a lot about gratitude and the healing benefits of being grateful and feeling gratitude. I call it vitamin G. I love it that mm-hmm. much. So I want to ask you, Emily, what are you grateful for today? So I have found that Bartonella has been my greatest spiritual teacher. Um, my whole journey with chronic pain, chronic Lyme, mold uh, has been a challenge to evolve. And... Uh, I bow down to it deeply. I love that. I didn't expect that. And I love that answer. <laughs> this, this was great. We'll do round two um, because oh, there's like sure. so many more questions that we could get into. But uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, I want to go check out your clinic for those watching and listening. I'll, I'll, if, when I do that, I'll post some Instagram stories from your clinic as well. We'll do that panel. That would we'll be do some lovely. Good things. Yeah. So thank you so much, Emily. I appreciate your time. And we'll do round two in uh, 2024. Okay. Thank awesome. you. Thank you.